Hey everyone, it's back. <laughs> Ready for some more charmed rewind, Phelan? Am I ever <laughs> <laughs> thrown into the middle of a stupid season eight plot? I know, man. This is so jarring to get jumping around like this. It's so when you get stuck, you have to remember what plots are happening around the time. Yeah. And then it reminds you all of the bad ones too. You're like, oh no, ugh, that <laughs> ugh. So Charmed didn't have a uh, Christmas episode ever. Um, <laughs> they only vaguely alluded to Christmas existing once or twice, but they uh, they sure did have episodes that aired around Christmas. <laughs> so they had episodes that featured ice, which is Christmas. <laughs> yeah, ice. What killed Leo? My bad acting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so that was what people were voting on in the Happy Halley Days poll, <laughs> and it was uh, it was all the episodes from each season that just aired closest to Christmas, and the winner was season eight, episode ten, Via Con Leos. <laughs> So in season eight, we're smack dab in the middle of um, a bunch of shitty plot lines involving uh, uh, Billy and her sister. Uh, you got this stuff going on with their destiny, yada, yada, yada. This episode is about the angel of death coming after Leo mm -hmm. <laughs> because of uh, network mandates. <laughs> yeah. Network mandates and no money. No money. So, uh, so there's a backstory behind this episode. Uh, if anyone's watched the uh, the charmed videos uh, that I did covering this, so during season eight, the network uh, told them basically you got to have these extra characters and these love interests and all these other things. So you get like Henry and Coop and um, and Billy and all these other things. So. It wasn't exactly Charm's fault how it ended up this way, but they already had like a slashed budget and they had all these extra characters, so they had to get rid of someone and Brian Krause ended up on the chopping block. So um, they wanted to write out Leo some way, mm -hmm. uh, but um, they didn't want to kill him off, so they had to come up with some sort of plot device <laughs> to get rid of him most season. You think the pitch in the writer's room went like, so we have to put the character of Leo on ice and then they go... That's what we do. Literally yeah. put them on ice. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, well, it worked so well that one time we froze him and then blasted him into chunks <laughs> and walked through him. Real callback. We're going back to our roots here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Surprise, Piper didn't do that. Such a sweet disposition on that character. Oh my god. <laughs> so loving. It's like how the episode, episode <laughs> opens. It's just her being a real loving wife. <laughs> god, yeah, from the very opening. For an episode that's about their relationship and supposed yeah. to be so heart wrenching, she is such a bitch to him <laughs> through most of it. God. So they, they have like a full house opening. I'm not sure if it's the same footage from the full house opening, but it's definitely yeah, one of the shots of the Golden Gate Bridge looks a lot like one of the go <laughs> one of the full house intro shots. <laughs> Everywhere you look, yeah. there's an angel of death <laughs> and a husband who needs you <laughs> and a wife who hates you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, Leo and Piper are looking uh, at classic cars. Uh, there's like a, an old truck that Leo wants to buy because it reminds him of his past. Um, mm -hmm. Because he, uh, gosh, when did he die? He was in World War II, right? I think. It was at yeah. least the 40s. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's easy to forget that his character is supposed to be like a bajillion years old because he's kind of dumb sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and it's I mean, also, not that age always equals wisdom, but you know, <laughs> surely he's picked something up. <laughs> yeah, and like I mean, that doesn't come up a lot in Charm, like in bringing up anything about the forties or anything. Yeah, I did like when they occasionally delved into that. That was a little bit interesting to me. They had the one where um he goes to like uh this like veterans party or something and meets a bunch of his old friends and posing mm. as like his grandson or something right so that was that was kind of interesting you know i think this is the first time we've done a, a leo centric episode on charmed rewind it's sort of leo centric he doesn't actually do a whole lot though. <laughs> <laughs> he's the, well he certainly is a plot device yeah <laughs> 
Yeah, we don't learn too much. Um, he does talk about this classic truck and how um, it reminds him of his past, and this will be his chance to kind of start over as a human, because at this point, uh, he's a, a fallen angel. He was like all sorts of... He was an avatar, and then he was an elder, and then he was all these other things, and then he, he falls from grace, and now he's a, a human. And um, it's so it's so hard to keep track of what he is at any point in time. Yeah. The only time I knew with this one, it's like, well, I guess if the angel of death's after him, I guess he's not a white light or an elder anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he talks about it at one point, too. It's like, no, oh, this is my chance to live again because my original life was cut short. Da, 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 da. Well, he's a uh, waxing nostalgic. <laughs> Piper's like, keep it down. <laughs> Quit Literally talking about that. Wax, waxing nostalgic as he works on the old truck. He's waxing the car. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Very literal with everything. He's waxing nostalgic. Oh, oh you that's mean, what, like, yeah. Waxing yeah. an old vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> He's got, he's holding a turtle, not turtle wax. Like, damn it. <laughs> um, and he's like, you know, I can rebuild this car, and then I can maybe pass it down to our sons. It'll be really meaningful. And Piper's like, oh, you plan on keeping it that that long, huh? <laughs> yeah, she's kind of like talking all these lines like through her teeth. Like, oh, how long are we gonna have this for? Oh, great, that's gonna cost a lot of money. <laughs> It's like they never they never show the positive aspects of this to counterbalance her being a very caustic character. She's just a bitch. Mm -hmm. like you could have had she's a, so mean to him all the time. You could have had a version of the scene where it's like she doesn't fully get it, but she supports him on you know something that will be fun for him. But it's just like yeah. no, just open contempt for him and anything he <laughs> likes. <laughs> just like, and he he just takes it like, ah, oh, you silly. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's just like Mister Oblivious over here to this <laughs> steaming pile of hate standing beside him. <laughs> he's been so worn down. Eight seasons in, he's like, I don't, uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the real reason this episode is a tragedy is that death would have been a sweet release for him. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, while Leo's going to buy the car, she's like, she's like, fine, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> while he's going to do that, uh, Piper sees her old friend, the Angel of Death, <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> she's like, hey! <laughs> It's sad that they're so familiar at this point. This is his, like, I think third appearance on the show. Mm. They had an episode previously where she switched places with the Angel of Death. <laughs> and I think she was feeling also nostalgic about that yeah. because throughout this whole episode, she is dressed like, <laughs> like she's fucking Christopher Walken in the Prophecy movies or something. <laughs> yeah, at one point I almost confused this with her old Angel of Death episode just because she's dressed like she's about to reap people constantly. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> You could almost hear like the the theme from the the empire as he's like she's walking. The thing she's more evil than the angel of death. <laughs> like yeah, the angel of death. He's not even like he's a neutral party. Yeah, like he doesn't actually like he doesn't want to kill people. It's just his job. He doesn't have any connections to them or anything. He actually feels kind of bad about this one because he doesn't actually get to know anyone ever except these people he got to know because of their shit. Anigans. So now he's kind of like, he just a heads up. Yeah. Gonna <laughs> your have to read your die. husband. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on my list. <laughs> Kill Whitey! I, did, I liked after, okay, so she sees the angel of death across the street and she's like, uh oh, SpaghettiOs. And uh, the opening credits happen and then cut to Piper and Paige, and Paige is like, what? The angel of death? You're only just telling me this now? Mm -hmm. It's like, what, how much sooner could she have told it? How long did she wait? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you, you, why didn't you tell me later. during the credits? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't think it was important. <laughs> and then Paige is like, well, I'm going to go on this date with Henry, but I'm going to call that off. And she, Piper goes, no, <laughs> don't. You need to go on this date. She's like, what? She acts like she acts like the date is a punishment. She's like, you're just trying to get out of this date <laughs> by, yeah. by helping me and my husband. 
uh, Paige is actually being reasonable here going, oh yeah, maybe I should call off this, this thing that doesn't really matter if the Grim Reaper's showing up. <laughs> No. Even characters that aren't being selfish, other characters are pushing them into this. Like, yeah. no, dates are the most important thing in the world. Mm -hmm. If it was Phoebe, she'd be like, I'm sorry I can't do this right now. Yeah. I have to go on a date. I have to think about me. I don't have time for death right now when there's dates to be done. <laughs> God, this comes up later in the episode, but like... Alyssa Milano does that really insufferable thing she does when she's like being really condescending and like... I'm sorry, sweetie. I have to do what I have to do. Yeah. I have to think about me sometimes. <laughs> this is really hard on me. You don't know how hard this is on me. <laughs> fuck off! <laughs> I'm gonna blow up my mic, but fuck off! <laughs> I just don't have time for you right now when I have to think about me. She does this all the time. She's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, she's got her own plot going on in this episode. But um, so uh, Piper and Paige are talking about the Angel of Death, and Piper's like, "Well, maybe I just imagined it actually. <laughs> like, like maybe I'm just stressing out, and the Angel of Death wasn't really there. Maybe it's nothing to worry about." Very clearly, this guy dressed all in black, standing mm -hmm. by himself, very visible to her. I don't know. Maybe yeah. I imagined it. <laughs> Cut to a little bit later. Um. Phoebe's at demon magic school and Piper calls and she goes, hey, you can't be doing this catch a demon <laughs> thing yeah. with Billy right now. I saw the angel of death. Like, wait, what? They can't Are do this. Are you worried this? about it or aren't you? Yeah, like, why? Why does Paige have time to go on a date? <laughs> but <laughs> Phoebe, in a rare occurrence of trying to do something that's furthering a plot, <laughs> she can't do that right now. <laughs> We've tried nothing, and we're all out of ideas. What the fuck? Why don't you let Phoebe do something? She's so useless. Not that she accomplishes much of anything in this episode. No. She <laughs> at least she had the slight ambition to go try and do something. That is kind of rare for Phoebe. Is, <laughs> I think this was during the point in time during season eight when she's trying to be like useful in any sort of way <laughs> before Coop shows up and derails that with the whole, like, yeah. we gotta get you a date train. Oh, uh, yeah. It's just you're focusing too much on work. Ugh, this, this show, that was so insufferable. I hate poop. <laughs> <laughs> the, the poop really hit the fan. The, the coop hit the fan. The, fan. the, coop hit, the coop hit the fan. Yeah, you called him poop the entire time until that line. <laughs> yeah, until that line. The coop hit the fan. <laughs> That's their version of jumping the shark. <laughs> the coop hit the fan. <laughs> so yeah, Billy and Phoebe are hanging out at magic school for people who, for whatever reason, haven't watched Charm but are listening to this. Billy is there, uh, <laughs> Kaylee Cuoco's character, who's um, a young witch ward who's shown up, and she's um, she's trying to find her sister who went missing when they were kids. She's a real uh, fox molder. Her sister was abducted <laughs> yeah. when she was younger. Like I, rem I remember not being that annoyed with Billy, as like a lot of people seem to be, but. It's hard in, to in, separate her from Big Bang Theory at this point, and <laughs> just, like, I think of that show and I get annoyed. <laughs> that is true, but um, in concept, it's annoying because no one likes young, fresh character shoved in by a right. network to, like, take away from the protagonist. But at this point, the protagonists really suck, <laughs> yeah. and she's the only one trying to accomplish anything. It's kind of insufferable because, like... Through this whole episode, even, they are so mean to her mm -hmm. when she's trying to find her sister and they're just shoving her. Like, they don't give a shit about yeah. what's happening with her plot in the slightest. I think that's the reason why I maybe I just didn't get, mind Billy that much since she seemed like a character who was trying to actively do things. <laughs> she had motivations. She wasn't just talking about dates all the time. She didn't complain all the time. Yeah. And I think they derailed Paige a bit by this point, maybe. Yeah. Uh, they had done some stuff with her that wasn't great. Season 8, she was sliding a bit into that, but um, I didn't was... mind her relationship with Henry, because I thought Henry was, was kind of interesting, yeah. but I wish that it had happened sooner, because it is just sort of shoehorned in, because they're like, we need to pair everyone up with someone. Yeah, well, and that was silly, but yeah, I think her thing with Henry was, like, one of the sort of interesting things going on in Season 8. It had, um, 
plot developments I liked, but they were very rushed because they had so much going on yeah. in season eight that you know, there wasn't really enough time for anything. Mm-hmm. But oh, okay, so back to Billy and Phoebe. They're um they're hanging out at magic school, and at this point, I think it's been taken over by demons, which is why Billy is in her um trademarked demon to- tank top, like because it's yeah. black, instead which like is their that, demon uh, disguise. <laughs> yeah. Instead of like that cave set they used to use like all the time in Charm for like the underground or wherever it was, now it's just magic school because. We've got that set, and we're not using it for magic school plots anymore. So, yeah, demons all hang out at the old magic school. They even had that, like, they had that whole plot about Paige becoming headmaster (laughs) of magic school because no one was fighting for it after the stuff with Gideon and all that. So they were like, oh, okay, so she's going to, like... She's going to take take over because no one else gave a shit about it. So she's going to ha- because this is helping a lot of kids, including Piper's kids as well. Uh, but then I guess nobody gave a shit enough about it because the demons took over and they're like, oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't even know how that happened. It's supposed to have protections on it. I don't know if they adequately explained how the demons took over. I forget on that. I think just apathy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the only reason. <laughs> <laughs> they just didn't want it bad enough, even though it was supposedly a big deal. Screw it. <laughs> these these two are on a stakeout, waiting for, like, um, Billy thinks that some demon that knows something about her sister's kidnapping is going to show up for reasons I'm not clear on. And while she's waiting in her demon tank top, <laughs> Phoebe is hiding behind a chair leg, not very well. Not a table, but yeah. Yeah, t- uh, t- uh, yeah, table leg, sorry. Yeah. But yeah, like she's sticking out, like half her ass is hanging out on the other <laughs> side of this like table leg. Like anyone walking in this room be like, oh, so there's someone crouched over by that table. <laughs> like, I'm just I'm just thinking about the premiere of season eight. This is when they're when they're supposed to be dead and they're posing as other people. They go into the kitchen during their own wake. Yeah. <laughs> And then, like, they turn into themselves to go, like, hey, what's up, sisters, where anyone could just walk in. And then they go to peer out at the wake, and Phoebe sticks her whole fucking face out there, like, what's going on? How many people are looking at my picture? Yeah. Spies, oh, no, they're just they stupid leprechauns at your picture, Paige. <laughs> Ugh, fucking leprechauns. Totally not spies. <laughs> <laughs> they're the worst. Well, what do you know? It's not every day you see the stupidest thing you've ever seen. Well, yeah, Piper calls Phoebe because they got re- good reception. <laughs> they even make a joke about it. They've got good reception in, in magic school. Mm-hmm. They're Harry Potter magic school. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Piper's like, yeah, you can't do that now. I saw the angel of death. Uh, the demon shows up, and he's a guy who was hired by the demon that took Christy. That's Billy's sister. Uh, it, what's this guy's aesthetic, <laughs> Phelan? Phantom of the fuckwad. <laughs> <laughs> So, big fan of the Robert Englund Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> he comes in <laughs> with a Freddy claw and, like, a stupid cape <laughs> and stuff. And a turtleneck. And Don't a forget turtleneck the turtleneck. And, like, uh, <laughs> his face isn't scarred, but it's got, like, markings on half of it. So it sort of gives him that kind of half-messed-up face look. <laughs> <It's> just, uh, <laughs> Phantom. I got a little bit of Jesse Ventura vibes <laughs> from this guy. <laughs> Jesse Ventura is Robert England is <laughs> Phantom of the Opera. I think even Jesse Ventura in Abraxas was better than this guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's harsh, Phil. That's really it's pretty harsh. bad acting out of this guy. <laughs> the best thing about Abraxas was your line that you. <laughs> 10,000 years. <laughs> yeah, 10,000 years, and he never found a personality. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what this demon, this demon guy reminds me of. <laughs> yeah, probably a similar thing. He's probably supposed to be around 10,000 years. Yeah. Could have found that personality, bud. <laughs> I love it when, like, things that have demons or vampires, like, they just come up with, like, random years for them to have been alive, but never think about, like, what that, like, what a person would be like if they've been around for, like, 10,000 years. That's such a a long time. (laughs) Mm -hmm. They'll be like, yeah, I'm 10,000 years old, (laughs) but I'm so stupid. And get, like, killed immediately. (laughs) What? How did they live that long? (laughs) Um, yeah, so immediately while uh, Billy's trying to interrogate him, uh, this demon bounty hunter named Burke shows up and takes him. 
He goes, um, and guess what? He immediately sees Alyssa Milano crouched over by a table. <laughs> yeah, she did. She did nothing. She did nothing in that scene. No, I guess it did fool Phantom of the Fuckwad. I don't know if he noticed her. So somehow he's that bad. He couldn't see her past his Freddy claw. He's waving in his face, covering that side of the room. <laughs> he, he's nearsighted, but he's really self-conscious about his looks, so he won't wear glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I He's needed the master five thousand years, really, but I was like, I'm too cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like he did pretty well for five thousand years, but eventually, you're just gonna catch up with you. <laughs> I can't tell you how desperately I want to call this episode "Phantom of the Fuckwad," but I can't. <laughs> uh, but who cares about that plot? Uh, we got Paige's date with Henry. <laughs> I wish that we hadn't just caught the end of this date, because it seemed like they were having a fairly interesting conversation. Uh, they're talking about Henry having foster parents, which uh, which Paige, Paige relates to because she was adopted. Uh, he talks about his parolees because he's a cop. And Paige gets upset because he's like, well, here's your half of the bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he went Dutch on her and she did unexpected Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> There's two things that she hates. <laughs> People who are intolerant of other cultures and the Dutch. <laughs> Maybe the only funny line from Austin Powers 3. <laughs> Piper calls her to just see, like, be like, Heads up, I know I told you to go on that date, but Angel of Death's coming. What are you doing on a date? <laughs> and um, Paige calls him a cad? Yeah. For for going Dutch on her? Oh, I saw a cad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a little harsh. <laughs> Why did you say that name? Who even uses the word cad anyway? <laughs> Someone who finally found out they had to pay fifteen dollars. <laughs> All of this for a salad? <sighs> Just a bunch of leaves. <laughs> it's expensive salad then. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they went to maybe that was uh that was where uh where Piper used to work, the Quake or something? Was that what it was called? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Something like it that. It might be the same set. I'm not sure, though. Mm -hmm. Piper tells her what's happening with Phoebe and Billy. There's a lot of phone action going on in this episode. A lot of people just phoning each other and saying, hey, here's what's going on in the other scene. Hey, aren't we kind of phoning in this episode? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's have them on the phone a lot. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Phoebe's really phony, huh? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Piper just realizes, oh shit, the angel of death, and runs in and uh, finds Leo underneath his truck fixing it up. So she pulls him out, because she, just now she's like, maybe I should be worried about this, even though she doesn't know the angel of death's after him yet. And she doesn't decide to clue Leo in at this point either. No, she doesn't tell him for a long time, which, like, at one point, it's like, okay, I guess maybe she's trying to protect him, even though this is really stupid. But at this point, she doesn't know that he's after him. She thinks the angel of death's after her because she saw him. And part of the rules with the angel of death is that the people who are going to be taken are the ones who see him. Uh, but I guess there's an exception there because they, they had all the shenanigans with him before. They're great adventures yeah. <laughs> with, uh, with the angel of death. Uh, yeah, I don't know why she doesn't tell him at this point. Leo's worried because she she thinks she she does say like you're gonna get killed if you hang out under this truck or whatever, and she's stressing. So he knows that she's stressing about something and is worried that maybe she's having some control issues. Because <laughs> in case anyone hasn't noticed, <laughs> she's a little controlling. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> what? How dare you call me controlling, Leo? Let <laughs> me squirt your poison. <laughs> <laughs> You're so useless now that you don't have powers. I didn't want you to help people, but you could have changed a light bulb when you could levitate. <laughs> we didn't remember you could do that very often, though, did we? That, that vagina, white and new charm. Do you think <laughs> Piper just has acid shooting out of her vagina? Oh my god, no! No! Oh my god! <laughs> Paige, you have to come in and heal my husband's dick again. Stupid white lighters can't heal themselves. <laughs> it's melting away like the fly when he's got the acid spit and his arm. <laughs> you think that's bad? I can't even masturbate. 
He's almost melted away. Paige is like, there's not much left. Are you, are you sure I shouldn't just let him go? He's like, I'm not done with him yet. Oh my god. Oh my god. He's he's being sucked into her acid vagina and blood is spewing out like Evil Dead 2 in the trap door. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't want to want what's on the other side. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Death comes in. Well, I told you this is gonna happen. <laughs> Shut up! And her jaw unhinges and she swallows. Oh. All. <laughs> this turned into a Brian using a movie really quickly. <laughs> I'm so sorry, people listening. I think this is pretty gross. <laughs> and that's the story of how Piper became the new Undertaker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she gives uh she gives Phoebe the tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> so Piper decides she's gonna deal with this by going to the attic and complaining until the angel of death brings his grim reaping ass down there. <laughs> she's one of her powers is just complaining until she irritates someone into showing up. Yeah. I don't get to uh, death says you know, I appeared to give you a heads up that I'm going to reap the shit out of Leo. And, you know, just because I know you, I thought I'd give you a chance to say goodbyes and stuff. But why did he just appear then in the middle of the street and say nothing until she yeah. yelled at him to come down? Like, OK, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe she sh maybe he showed up at the car lot and then he sees her pissy face and he's like, "Oh, this is a bad time. I'll I'll come back later." <laughs> good luck finding a good time. <laughs> he d he forgot she's always got always got pissy face. <laughs> Why is the angel of death more sympathetic than, he really than Piper? Is. I'm like, he's like he's he's got more heart than she does. Yeah. <laughs> That's why that Angel of Death, the episode where she switches places with him was so good, because she fit the role so well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, he's coming to write Brian Krause out of the show. <laughs> so I heads like up. when he shows up to, like, Piper's like, you're not taking me. <laughs> 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 be great if she's like, you're not taking me. And she's like dressed like Rambo. She's got all these, what, she's throwing grenades at him. <laughs> you're not going out there to fight death. He's just standing there doing nothing. He's like. Anyway, <laughs> dead? <laughs> well, I wasn't going to take you, but now I think I will. Yeah, I can always make an addition to the list, you know. It's not that hard. <laughs> He's kind of like the sideshow Bob of their universe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the one where sideshow Bob's turned good, though, and everyone's yelling at him, even though he's not doing anything. <laughs> He tries to go after Piper steps on a rake. <laughs> <laughs> no, it says the Leo, the. <laughs> Sideshow death. Uh, <laughs> so he's giving her a warning. Heads up. You got to say goodbye because I'm going to take him. I don't know how he's going to die. I just know when. Um, And I guess he must know where. <laughs> eventually you'll have to find him but um he says you know there's a reason for everything network interference yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your budget can't candle this <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm sorry you can't afford him and coop and clearly coop was the more important yeah. addition we, to the cast everyone is going like where's coop I wonder what Coop's doing right now. What might Coop be thinking? Good old, good old Cooper Smith. <laughs> Fuck off, Cooper Smith. <laughs> Stupid time traveling Cupid ring. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Man, the day we got to cover a Coop episode is going to suck. Because <laughs> yeah. then we have to rewatch a fucking Coop episode. Oh, see his dumb face. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be what I call the poll. The coop hits the fan. <laughs> what, what movie did we watch where that guy is in it? Didn't he die? <laughs> oh, yeah, it was something where he was like an angel or, or something, and he was battling... Yeah, he's battling something. Shit, I think what it, was it? He, oh, it was Wishmaster. It was like one of the Wishmaster sequels, and all of a sudden it was about angels and demons for some reason. Uh, <laughs> it's a bunch of, like, Christian mythology <laughs> thrown in there with the jinn. Right. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck was happening in that one. Yeah, very weird. 
the angel of death uh, takes off and Piper just heads on over to their magic walk <laughs> and casts a spell to hide Leo from the angel of death. And that's when Paige calls her and they reveal that every guy in the world has become Leo now. This is so stupid. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a barrage of bad screening effects, <laughs> bad compositing. It's just like, oh. <laughs> They were like, we don't have the money to do this for very much of the episode, but we're going to make it look good for this shot. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I, w- uh, I wish this had been the majority of the episode, because it it absolutely is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, <it's funny. laughs> A bunch of Brian Krauses walking around. And they never show this, but this is every man in the world. Mm-hmm. Everyone. So their sons, <laughs> Wyatt and Chris, have to also oh. be Leo at this point. That would have been amazing if they had showed that. It'd be hilarious. I don't know which is the funnier option. If it's just a couple of, like, Brian Krauses in diapers sitting there, like, <laughs> or if it's a bunch of babies, but with, but with Brian, Brian Krause Kra- heads. I think babies with <laughs> Brian Krause heads would be funnier. Yeah, do the baby geniuses <laughs> route. <laughs> Leo geniuses. <laughs> I I wish to God that they had shown us this. Yeah, that they robbed us on that one. I don't get to <laughs> though. It's like everyone else in the world, I guess, doesn't see this, but Death does. Like, like yeah, no one seems to notice this. This is kind of a quantum leap situation. Everyone, <laughs> everyone doesn't seem to see Leo, but the audience. But then everyone does. But then no one cares. Mm-hmm. I'm in need of a guilt remover spell. Yeah, it's like, who sees this, who doesn't? Like, just non-magical people? Like, then I think it'd still be pretty easy for Death to track them down. Not that it wouldn't be anyway, because it's like, hmm, I wonder which Leo's the real one. Maybe the one that's upstairs in his room at the Charmed House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even the Angel of Death's kind of like, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> this, this was that your plan? One. <laughs> I mean, really? <laughs> Wow, I I thought you guys were supposed to be like the chosen ones or something, but you really suck. (laughs) Uh, Paige, Phoebe, and Piper are discussing this whole situation with uh, everyone being Leo. Uh, Phoebe is shoved off to go hang out with Billy on demon duty uh, while Leo walks in. And he has still not been told about the angel of death being after him. He's like, what's going on, guys? <laughs> I'm just working on that truck. Waxing yeah, how long is he wor- <laughs> How long has he been doing this? Every man in the world is Leo. Meanwhile, he's just sitting there oblivious to yeah. us all. <laughs> We've tried nothing. Uh, cut to uh, the demon bounty hunter and uh, Phantom of the Fuckwad talking. <laughs> About Billy's sister. The the demon bounty hunter Burke has this chamber full of freezing tubes yeah. and these crystals where he yeah, like he activates his freeze, his cryo freeze or whatever. What why does he have this? Just so he can hang on to demons while he's delivering them or collect Just bounties so or something? He can deliver solo to Jabba the Hut. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Billy finds a page in the Book of Shadows that's about this guy, and she says she can find him, but Phoebe, who's come in, to see, they're like, yeah, go take care of Billy or whatever. Phoebe goes in there and sighs. <laughs> <sighs> I can't really do this right now. I have to, I just, I have to focus on my family. It's just, I, I'm so torn. I just can't be bothered with your thing. Yeah. She proceeds to do nothing yeah. with the Leo plot. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, what was she even going to do? She's like, yeah, I think I should try and help them with leo so you just do your thing on your own i guess it was just like what she doesn't she even do? show up yeah she, she doesn't even show up in any scenes with everyone no. else not even useless and like oh she showed up she didn't have anything to do she literally just fucks off somewhere to drink lattes or something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she's not she's not there i <laughs> started writing a column <laughs> dealing with everyone else <laughs> I love how she's like, she's such a condescending asshole about it. Like, she's like, it's different because it's my family and not yours. Yeah. (laughs) She still does nothing. (laughs) Billy has every right to side with her sister because, like, the only people making any sense in this plot is the demons. (laughs) They're like, yeah, the sisters are evil. And they're, like, just selfish and focusing on their own shit all the time when everything else in the world's getting fucked up and they're not even doing what they're supposed to do. It's true. (laughs) Yeah. So Piper and Leo are in their bedroom, 
and he's finally been told <laughs> that, hey, the angel of death's going to reap your ass. <laughs> and they get mad at each other, but he has to comfort Piper because yeah. she's upset about this. <laughs> yeah, Piper what? turns this around and being about her. <laughs> He's gonna die. Let him have his moment. <laughs> Your dying's also hurt on me. <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry." He has to apologize to her, <laughs> and then she won't even let him see their kids. She's like, "Oh, it's not safe. You can't go see the kids now." <laughs> <laughs> Piper's such a monster. <laughs> <laughs> she really is. I, one thing I'll say about this scene, uh, the acting is really good because, like, it, they're both having a breakdown over this. Like, he's like, how am I going to tell the kids about uh, what am I going to tell them? Like, do I tell them I'm going to die? Like, mm -hmm. how am I going to deal with this? There's all these things, like, I haven't done in my life. And, and, and Piper you know, tells uh, so him, I thought, tell like, him you're going out for Popeye cigarettes <laughs> and never coming back. <laughs> That'll be easier on him, don't you think? Yeah. What Papa cigarettes, guys? You can't smoke on TV now or whatever. <laughs> By this point, could they not smoke on TV? Early 2000s? I don't know. I don't know what the laws were at this point about that. I feel like it was just petering off then. Maybe. I think it's a lot harder to get away with it at this point. Probably depended on when it was airing. Wonder of wonders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 someone in the audience let us know <laughs> yeah, i'm sure someone will actually <laughs> but yeah i mean i i liked the acting in the scene i think um holly marie combs is good at crying in <laughs> scenes so i mean at this point at least you can understand why she would lash out or be kind of selfish or act like because she's like i just don't want to lose my husband you know so at least in this scene it makes sense the rest of it it's she's just she's just being mean for no reason mm -hmm. So the angel of death is downstairs, and he's just like, Hey, uh, cool plan. So is that the Leo upstairs? Should I take him now, or...? <laughs> oh, no, I'm the, the phone repairman. He'll <laughs> 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 never know that I'm the real Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, uh, I know you're the real Leo. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> This is when we get, like, a barrage of different Leos in costumes showing up. You get Leo Pizza Man. Yeah. Uh, Leo Dry Cleaner. Leo Clock Fixer. <laughs> yeah. Clock Fixer. I thought that was the funniest, most absurd thing. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> Clock Fixers. They always come by. <laughs> yeah, it's an old grandfather clock. You can't move it. It's too fragile. You think you that's really, really same-day repair grandfather oh my God. clock guy? I bet that dude was so excited. Clock nerds are probably like, they never get calls. And then like they're like, can you do a house call right now? And he's like, I'm on my fucking way. <laughs> yes, my time has come. I think that's exactly why they wouldn't have a same-day clock fixer. <laughs> That guy was waiting for the call. He was sitting alone, just staring at a phone, cobwebs building Watching up around his him. his business crumble and his money deplete. <laughs> you know, this was the worst business decision I could have ever made. Old Bart Simpson and Milhouse show up like, have we got a job for you? <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's when Leo Henry shows up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so he wants to talk to Paige, and none of the Leos know that they're Leo. Um, I thought this was interesting, but at the same time, I don't think Brian Krause had a lot to work with playing a character there. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, like, I don't think any of the Leos, except maybe the cab driver, had any discernible different personality than normal Leo. Yeah, not really. They just, he just talked like normal Brian Krause. He didn't bother, like, you know, maybe he has, like, a Boston accent, or maybe, <laughs> maybe one of them's, like, a little goofier, or what, it's something like that. Think, it was only, like, maybe one line that was kind of different. I think maybe he acted sort of aloof as the pizza delivery guy, but it wasn't much. <laughs> yeah. Granted, I mean, he doesn't have a lot of lines to work with, but you can take one line and just deliver it differently. You don't even have to come up with a fully formed character for that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he had much with Henry, because Henry is kind of a deadpan character, but I, I can't tell you, like, any jump-out characteristics that would be easy to do when, if you're imitating him. Yeah. And I don't think he's been around enough for them to do that much with someone else playing him. Yeah, he's just sort of normal-ass guy in a... Leather jacket, basically. <laughs> yeah. 
So he wants to know about this lunch and her uh, keeping secrets. Like, he's like, why is everything so complicated with you all the time? While this is going on, the real Leo takes off in a cab to go see his kids at school. Uh, and he pays off Cabby Leo to take a break. Cabby Leo's like, oh, it works for me. Yeah. <laughs> the guy was excited. That's when Death shows up and says, yeah, it was kind of obvious, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You didn't fool me for very long, as in, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> this was really stupid. Yeah. That's when we get some teary Brian Krauss acting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, like, this was a pretty good scene. He's he's basically begging for his life, and, and he's pointing out all the stuff about, like, he's like, you know, I died early the first time, mm -hmm. and all this other stuff going on. I gave up my life to, to do all of these things for the White Lighters and the Elders and all that, like... I, I have a chance to live again. You're just going to cut that short again. Um, and he won't uh, He won't grant him that. And uh, he just wants to see his kids. Like, he's like right there where his kids are. And then oh, Piper man. pops up in front of him and says, Why are you going to the stairway for the kids? <laughs> Shoots acid. Acid in his face. Shoots acid in his face before he can see the kids. How much did you pay that cabbie? We already spent enough money on that dumb truck of yours. You're not even going to fix because you're going to fucking die. What a waste of money. <laughs> that was actually her. She's dri she drives her his truck into him <laughs> as revenge. That would have been perfect. <laughs> Yeah, he uh, he tries getting out of the car, and just as he's getting out of the cab, uh, a truck just slams into him, fucks him up real good. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. This was, you know, this was a good scene. I thought if you separate this from like, you know, the rest of the bullshit of season eight, like, <laughs> um, props to Brian Krause because I think he did a good job. Yeah, I mean, like when they're talking about Leo's upcoming death, there is some good acting surrounding that. But I mean, this the whole. Like, it makes no sense when any of this gets explained story-wise and, like, the real-world explanation's really annoying and sloppy, too. <laughs> they they wasted too much time before telling him, too, because this could have been the central point of the episode, but they spend so much time dinking around with other things. Mm -hmm. And I think um, Charmed viewers at this point probably knew he wasn't going to be in the entire season, and... There was a possibility he could have died. I think they probably thought his character could die at this point mm. if they had decided to end the episode that way. So I think people might have been invested in this. Like, it might have been pretty sad for some people because they could have killed this character off. And it might have actually worked a little better, to be honest. But I don't know. <laughs> You must be kidding, aren't you? He had wanted a better story than this, though, because this is just kind of slapdash. I, just, I think there's some decent acting around it, but the story just going, oh, he's going to die suddenly because there's a design no. around it. It's just kind of like, <laughs> No, I don't think it should have been that at all. I think it should have been he just dies, like, in a car accident or something. Mm -hmm. And they had, like, it's just such a pointless, especially because you work with with magic and demons and all this stuff and then to die in just this pointless way mm -hmm. like that would have been a really like powerful story i think if if you're going to write him out anyway but they have all this other bullshit around it which is really uh really crummy he dies and the charmed ones find out he could have lived if that one which they cared about saving a little more had lived <laughs> <laughs> she would have been there in time to save him, but because they're so bad at saving anyone, they're the reason he's dead. Uh, I wrote in my notes, um, not to take away from the seriousness of this scene, he's hit by a truck and totally shrecked. <laughs> <laughs> so Piper and Paige go to the hospital. The spell's worn off, all the dudes are normal dudes again. Yeah, uh, they're not Leo's pulling still that alive. Off with all the people in the hospital, here. And they're like, we don't have enough money for all this. Yeah, it was still done. Uh, well, it kind of would take away from the seriousness of the scene a little bit if she goes to like visit him dying in the hospital and like oh, yeah, all of this. Leos are walking it's, around. <laughs> clearly, it's plot convenient and money convenient to stop it at this point. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it's kind of like pointless by now, anyway. Uh -huh. But, I mean, imagine if it wasn't off, it would be really <laughs> ridiculous. 
a nurse like it's just like like a, a nurse comes in and like is like checking on him and it's another leo yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh leo's really messed up his face is all fucked up he needs surgery uh the doctor the doctor's explaining like all of these injuries that he has and piper is like eh, in english <laughs> Before that, even, <laughs> she's talking to a receptionist or a nurse at the desk, and she's like, oh, I don't know about your husband or whatever. And Piper grabs her phone and, like, sl- hangs it up. And I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> just- she truly does not give a fuck about anyone else. No. Like, <laughs> like uh, when something's happening with Leo, she like she's like, the the world could end. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, maybe that was someone on the line talking about someone other, someone else's loved one in the hospital in near yeah. death condition, and she just slammed it, hung up on them. Like, ugh. <laughs> It's it's weird that she gets so invested when something's going on with Leo. Like they did this in like the 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 season ender when they become like goddesses and then like Leo's taken away and then she like is going to like end the world with her powers or something cuz her husband's gone. They do all this stuff, but then when they show the scenes when they're supposed to be in a normal happy relationship and she's just so mean and has such contempt for him. It's like why don't they show like the what she's actually fighting for. Yeah. Just they're not very good at writing these happy relationships. <laughs> anyway, dying old Leo's there with Perceptor and he's like, I feel the wounds are fatal. <laughs> <laughs> Starscream. <laughs> I am honored, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Who disrupts my coronation? Coronation Starscream? This is bad comedy. <laughs> I am now the leader of the elders! <laughs> Starscream orving down. <laughs> I can't believe I can't believe the network told them they had to add Starscream to the cast. It was a it was a real misfire. Yeah, I think is the only thing that saved <laughs> Kills Coop. It's really great. He crumbles. Yeah. And Coop, Coop is in crumbles. the crown. Coop's coronation, and then he crumbles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Piper is freaking out. She freezes everyone because she's just too overwhelmed. Uh, Paige is like, you can't just freeze everything. You got to deal with this problem. She goes in to to visit Leo um, in the hospital bed, all fucked up, and. Uh, <laughs> If I were Leo, I'd be pretty worried. If I saw her walking in, long black trench coat, black outfit. Leo, your soul is mine. Um, I mean, he does seem to know he's gonna die at this point. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, death kind of just told him, "Yeah, you're dead." And then Piper comes in and goes, "Ah, hey, you're gonna be okay." Like, uh, it's like I'm not the, really that buying seems- that one. Piper, death told me we're gonna, I'm gonna die, and told you I was gonna die. <laughs> Who do you think you're fooling? <laughs> It's like that scene in Loaded Weapon 1. Like, yeah. Leo, you're going to be just fine. Zip, yeah. the body bag, tosses it in the back. <laughs> yeah, Piper's basically like, don't you bitch out on me or I'll summon your ghost and you'll never hear the end of it. <laughs> don't you fucking die on me. <laughs> and at this point, yeah, we're like, where the fuck is Phoebe at? Like, she, she's not shown up since that scene where she's like, I gotta go help my sisters. I can't help you. Yeah. <laughs> It is a good point, though. Like, death is so cheap on Sharon. Death is so cheap on Sharon for multiple reasons. Like, if Leo died, he could just be there all the time, like Grandma Ghost. Yeah. (laughs) He could move in with Grandma Ghost. They'd be the most unlikely of roommates. (laughs) Uh, he could be a white lighter. He could be anything. I mean, like, he's he's already died multiple times. (laughs) So Paige uh, is talking to Piper, and she thinks maybe if there's something going on with that driver, like the guy that hit him. Like, if there's some magical explanation, then that means that they can fix this, because if it was some sort of magical thing, they can use their magic to try and, like, fix things with no personal gain or something or other. Mm -hmm. Uh, Billy goes to the demon bounty hunter lair wearing the ugliest halter top in existence, and she gets smacked around a bit. (laughs) But that's when Phoebe uh, decides that she's worthy of her, <laughs> so she shows up and saves her. 
after doing absolutely nothing in the other plot. Just thinking, smack my bitch up because we just watched <laughs> yeah. Charlie's Angels after you said she gets <laughs> smacked up. <a> bit. <laughs> if they had some more budget, they would absolutely use smack yeah. my bitch up in Charmed. They've done the smack whole Crispin Glover <laughs> fight. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So Phoebe saves Billy, which is a, a what's the opposite of a heel turn? Face turn? Yeah, she does a face, face turn. turn. <laughs> Like, and she's like, yeah, Piper will call me if she needs me. Yeah, bet you didn't <laughs> expect me to do something. <laughs> like, you're right, that was really unlikely, Phoebe. <laughs> Surprise, bitch. I thought you'd see, you bet you thought you'd seen the last of me. <laughs> but it's a great ending to my column, so I had to. <laughs> and then the day well, was uh, saved. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's nice that she went to save Billy. Mm -hmm. Points on that. But... It's really undercut by the fact that she did not even see her sisters once. So she actually doesn't give a shit about the Angel of Death story either. No. She just kind of fucked off on that one. Yep. If she was trying to help with both, maybe, you know, it would be a little better, but she <laughs> she didn't. <laughs> eh, Piper will call if she needs me. I like, too, that neither Piper or Paige has called Phoebe at this point, even though Leo's in the hospital dying. I know, he's dying. <laughs> not worth it. <laughs> Was, like, was Alyssa Milano doing something at the time? I feel like she was written out of a lot of scenes that maybe she would have been in. Mm. It is strange, her absence. It seems very split off. I think because they just have too many plots to focus on right now at this point. Yeah, perhaps. It is for a lot like New Charmed where they keep splitting off. Ugh. Don't remind me of New Charmed. <laughs> <laughs> Charm boot. Um. <laughs> the charmed boot. <laughs> uh, Piper is nagging the angel of death again to find out what the big reason behind this is. Uh, and he's like, I might get in trouble if I tell you about this. <laughs> he's just turning into fucking Harry now, yeah. in my impression. <laughs> just a soft-spoken British man. Yeah. Vaguely British. <laughs> I don't know if the guy's really British. He sounds vaguely British. <laughs> Uh, he's like, I, I might get in trouble for this, but talk to someone who knows about the grand design. But how does the angel of death get in trouble? Like, I don't what, know, yeah. what's his punishment? I don't know, they tell him off and then he'll just reap them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she's got to talk to some people who know about the grand design, which, um, they use this a lot in the comics, too, and this is a big part of this last season, the fucking, like, grand design, which makes no sense. No. Like, they're like, everything's in the grand design, and there's everything happens for a reason or whatever, but you can change it, and da-da-da, and it's like, well, if you can change it, it's not a grand design, is it? It's nothing. It's right. just some people plotting something. That was part of the Avatar thing, too, right? The grand design shit? It, it might have been. Yeah. I don't remember at this point. They were they were trying to create like a perfect utopia right. so that good and evil didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And I I don't remember exact. I know it ended in a really stupid like like they just talk at them for a little bit and they give up or something mid season. It was some weird ending. Yeah, to that. I think I thought there were some interesting things I remember with the Avatar storyline, but yeah, it kind of ended unsatisfactory. <laughs> Yeah, they did like a quick quick swerve in what they were going to do as the main plot mid-season. It seemed like they changed their minds about something. Yeah. But anyway, they summon an avatar. Well, Piper summons an avatar and an elder, so apparently she can just summon them, whatever. <laughs> um, And they start to bitch at her for doing it. But Piper is like, she's the queen bitch. Yeah. She's like, she's a black belt in, in bitching. Well, it's <laughs> you like, can't out bitch the bitcher. <laughs> they have like representatives from the three there. They have neutral, the avatar, good, the elder, and then pure evil Piper. <laughs> <laughs> the nexus underneath the, the house is like, where the fuck do I go? <laughs> So she's just bitching because she only cares about Leo. She's like, I don't give a fuck about this grand design stuff. <laughs> you gotta fix this. Uh, one of you is going to save Leo because you both owe him. That's what she said. You both owe him. Yeah. To the Avatar, too, it's like, well, Leo kind of turned on the Avatars, or right? I don't know if they would really feel like they owe him. <laughs> I don't remember how their plot ended, so I can't confirm or deny yeah. if, if they owed him anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> At the very least, she could have went to the Elder and been like, hey, you guys sent Q as a trucker to kind of trick him when he had amnesia, and that was all stupid, so maybe to make up for that. Yeah. <laughs> like, Where's John Delancey? Why wasn't this him? Was he dead on the show? 
I don't think they killed off his character. Okay. Did they? Did all the elders get killed at some point? I don't remember. <laughs> they, didn't, they, they didn't kill them all, because clearly there's an elder here. But <laughs> no, they had yeah, like a I don't big think he's dead. In heaven or wherever Elder Land is at one point, and I think a bunch of them got killed. Maybe that might have been during the comics, though. I'm not sure during. No, the... there was a one point during the show or something like that. Oh, happened. a bunch of them got killed by those gods that one time, but that was before John Delancey showed up. That uh, was pre Magic School and all that. Because okay. I remember he was in the Magic School talking about something i forget now yeah. i guess they couldn't afford john delancey because they couldn't afford no, brian Krauss. <laughs> no they couldn't even afford to get back the first angel of destiny guy yeah. <laughs> and that just seemed like one of the theater dad actors <laughs> <laughs> so so the avatar and the elder are like we can't save him like because we don't have the authority to do it this is we don't have the authority we're like this level clearance and you need a level clearance way up here yeah Angel, so talk Destiny to the Angel of Destiny clearance. Yeah. Uh, but meanwhile, Paige goes to Henry. Uh, she goes, she's trying oh, to find Henry. out about... Oh, Henry. Oh, oh, Henry! Oh, oh hungry? Oh, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, Henry! Oh, my God! Um, so she goes to him to find out about this driver of this car. She's still trying to figure out if there's some magical reason. Um, but he wants to talk about this date. Um, but he didn't think it was a date. He wanted to go to lunch at Nate's. Yeah. And then she's embarrassed, but actually he did want a date, yeah. but he thought that she would say no. Phelan, <laughs> 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 did you get that? He said Nate's, yeah. not date. <laughs> yeah. You want to go through lunch at dates? Oh, at dates? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, how did she mishear this? I don't know. <laughs> This is bad comedy. Paige is like, oh, well, that's a cool story. I guess that's cleared up. Anyway, I need access to one of your prisoners. No questions asked. <laughs> he's not. I don't think he's even like they They can't have like charged him with anything yet. Right. Like he's just in holding or something. Yeah, I imagine. Will they investigate what happened at this point? Yeah, he's probably just in holding. Because he's still like he's like bandaged up. His head's kind of like, you know, he got bumped his head or something and like. But yeah, they take him into like um, the interrogation room, and then just he like Henry puts his whole job on the line, just leaves her in there. This woman he's had one date with, they didn't even know was a date. Yeah, yeah it's just like <laughs> why? Why is he willing to do this? Like, this is so ridiculous. Mm, it's <sighs> gonna screw over my career because someone said, "Please let me talk to someone you have been holding." <laughs> someone that you were kind of upset at a few minutes ago. Yeah. Someone who, like, uh, was responsible for putting someone in your family in the hospital. Yeah, sure, I'll let you have access to them. Unrestricted, no cameras, no one watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> he knows that she's kind of, like, do doing her own kind of vigilante thing, too, at this point, and getting involved with all this other stuff, because they had plots beforehand when they met, like, yeah. that involved, like, this parolee and all this other stuff even even if she hadn't done that how often would she was you... upset that they went dutch and then it was, she thought it was a date yeah. so if the, if she was upset about that this guy yeah just like yeah I mean, put it's extra her, her uh, brother-in-law into a coma yeah. <laughs> it's extra hilarious yeah after her yelling at him about that but it's just like even if I, all of that hadn't happened can you imagine just like Oh, uh, someone put someone's family member in the hospital and they're not expected to live. And I want unrestricted access to them and no one watching. Like, what do you No think? one watching. No cameras and you can't ask me why. Yeah. <laughs> like, how often, like, what would you think? Of course, you're going to think they want revenge. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> But he he probably was cool with these. All right. Yeah. Oh, sure. How ahead. are you going to explain that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She also helped, like, um, there was, I feel like there was something with that plot with that, that parolee in that previous episode where he, like, had a knife and blood on him or something, but then they're just like, yeah, it's fine, let's just let him go. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that might have just been Henry, though. Maybe Henry just sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Henry. <laughs> So, uh, so Paige is like, hey, I'm a witch, and orbs him out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, she throws a truth potion at him to find out who's behind this, who's responsible this. Uh, but it turns out it's nothing. He's just a dude. He's just some guy that was driving a truck really, uh, irresponsibly. Yeah. 
Dead end. Speaking of death, here comes Piper. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. She, what are you doing messing around with that pee on page? And then she shoots acid <laughs> at him and kills him. <laughs> <laughs> Phoebe and Billy <laughs> have the bounty hunter trapped and they're threatened to fr- threatening to freeze him unless he talks. So they're going to threaten to torture him, basically, unless he talks about Christy. Um... But right at this moment, Phoebe is orbed out by her sisters. Um, <laughs> they can do that now. They can just like cast a spell and then just yeah, teleport I was her really out. Really confused about how that happened because w- I think usually Paige or Leo would have to orb them to get them out of somewhere. And if they did that, they would have to come there for a second first to do it. <laughs> yeah, it seems uh like this would be very helpful in a lot of situations if they had a spell they could just cast and like just teleport them for where from wherever yeah. they not know like what phoebe is doing too like what she is driving and they just teleported her yeah, out like yeah. that. <laughs> that's why leo got hit <laughs> she was driving the truck so phoebe's just not gonna talk about billy billy's like still there with that bounty hunter yeah. she's in a dangerous situation she's just like all right i guess we're gonna summon the angel yeah, of destiny she, now she's so <laughs> unconcerned with what's going on with billy it's just like what <laughs> none of the sisters give a fuck about billy in this episode no. <laughs> and that doesn't really help endear your audience to someone that you're shoving on them anyway mm-hmm. if your main characters can't even give a fuck about them <laughs> yeah but i mean just also paints the main characters in a bad light <laughs> oh yeah they just seem like com- completely like callous trolls <laughs> mm-hmm. and like it, this is also a show where they've had a big problem with these three not saving people <laughs> yeah and then you add someone else and they don't care. So it's just like, okay, so clearly it's just about their little world and anyone outside of it can die. <laughs> mm-hmm. So they summon uh, the Angel of Destiny, but it's not Theater Dad. <laughs> so they have to establish that there's many Angels of Destiny uh, because there are many destinies. Um, which I'm pretty sure contradicts what they said before. I'm pretty sure they acted like he was the only one. In that, uh, the one where you yeah, showed up. Yeah, they even had to say, like, well, there's many destinies. <laughs> so, yeah, they had to it, quickly explain why suddenly it's like a black lady. They could even say, like, oh, I can look like however I want, because this is just the form I take. Mm-hmm. They could have even said that. Yeah. But now there's many of them. It's kind of like when the Oracle and the Matrix suddenly changed actors, and they had to have <laughs> a clunky line to try and explain that. Yeah, that, that's a tough situation. Mm-hmm. So, Phelan, what was the reason Leo had to die? <laughs> <laughs> because they had to have motivation to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Even though, like, he was just going to die in an unrelated thing. That was apparently supposed to make them angry enough to fight. Um, I think it's because, like, light a fire Piper under just, their like... Ass. <laughs> Yeah, I think because Piper just fucks off so much. They're like, we're going to kill your husband off, so you have to focus on this destiny now because you keep fucking off with your real life shit. I don't (laughs) think that tracks very well because, like, what do they do when, like, Piper's not with Leo? They try and hook her up with people constantly. So this would have just shifted their focus to them. They're like, all right, Piper, we're going to get you dates. (laughs) Lots and lots of dates. Oh, look, it's Fireman so-and-so. It's Neighbor Dan. Neighbor Dan's back. return, even though I think he's dead at this point. Have we seen that file that said he was dead or missing? Shit, yeah. I think at the end of season seven is when they have the files and then it like (laughs) would seem to imply that Neighbor Dan died at some point. Yeah, I think either dead or missing. I forget what the file is about. Was something like yeah, that? Yeah, it. Did, yeah, it does say that. So it's like, wait, did the charmed ones get rid of him because he knew too much? <laughs> <laughs> Thought he just moved away, but apparently something very sinister happened. <laughs> they got zero to take care of him. <laughs> Stupid Cabral. <laughs> Much like uh, Jenny, his niece, yeah. <laughs> they they were like, we had to write Leo out because there was no story purpose for him. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they're j- basically the sisters are so selfish and fuck off so much, the, the angel of destiny had to come in and kill off her husband <laughs> to get her to do something. Um, I feel like, though, like, when they switch the plan here, it's like, instead of Leo dying, okay, we'll put him on ice. It's like, okay, but... 
But this one makes a little bit more sense. It's like, okay, we're going to take your husband away, but you can have him back when you're good. <laughs> yeah, basically they have to use him as leverage to not be an asshole. Like, is it great for your hero to have to have leverage to do something heroic? <laughs> Like that makes more sense. They have though. to blackmail her. They have to blackmail her into into being a hero. Yeah. <laughs> but now, like it's at least directly related. I don't understand why, like in the in the Leo die scenario, why it wouldn't have it had something to do with you know who they had to fight if they wanted. I think it was just because she was too distracted with her life shit. But if they're gonna do that, they might as well just like pull a Hercules and just blow him up along with her kids in front of her in a bunch of fireballs. (laughs) (laughs) But I just think it would have made more sense that way though, because then she would want revenge and be more motivated to go after them instead of possibly falling into this poor me well of despair, which is maybe what she would do. I mean, maybe they realize that anger is is a really strong motivator for her. I mean, <laughs> like she's, she, she's ready anyway. to like end the world. <laughs> <laughs> they could have That's like true. like told Piper Leo stayed up like past his bedtime that she imposes on him, <laughs> and like she'd be angry enough to kill someone. <laughs> Leo spent more than like twenty dollars on lunch today. Piper. <laughs> How much did you spend on a bagel? (laughs) (laughs) He's like Aladdin. He just wants a crust of bread. (laughs) Leo had a beer today, Piper. Ah! (laughs) How many times on this show do they have to have the charmed ones argue with a villain or argue with a big power or whatever about how they're owed something because they're so good and how much they've done for everyone <sighs> holding it over everyone at least twice in this episode like piper's like you owe us yeah. she's telling the angel of destiny you can't kill him because you owe us because we're awesome mm-hmm. and it's like fuck you know <laughs> all right i'm gonna do a buffy comparison again here because <laughs> it's so good okay so generally speaking you're gonna want your hero to be like a little bit humble (laughs) so there was like this um there was this uh episode they had in buffy where the watchers council shows up and the watchers council is like a bunch of assholes Mm -hmm. and uh and they're being a bunch of dicks they're giving her a bunch of tests and they're like you got to do what we say you got to do because we're in charge and you got we're going to interview all of your friends and we're going to decide if you're the best slayer blah 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 at the very end like they're they're holding this over her because um they have some information about the big bad and at the very end, she's got her big sword, <laughs> and she's like, well, I'm not going to fucking listen to you anymore. <laughs> uh, I'm the one in charge. You guys need me more than I need you. I was the one that, like, said I'm not going to listen to the Watchers anymore way back when, uh, and you guys are nothing without me. So you owe me. I'm the important one. Tell me what I need to know. And they do, and they fuck off. <laughs> and that was, like, a big moment. It was like, you know what? Actually, I'm in charge. Like, enough of this. Like, I am the slayer. I'm I'm the chosen one, whatever. Um, but she doesn't go around like, everyone owes me because I'm so good at everything. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have, like, your big moments, you know? And, and Charm doesn't choose their big moments. They just, like, have a bunch of really conceited characters that are constantly yeah. acting like they're owed something for get it, having spa days and it, fucking yeah, off all the time they act, going on dates. They act very self-entitled all the time, so it doesn't mean anything when they're telling other higher-up beings that they're owed something, because it just feels like what they do every day. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything except our characters are full of themselves. Yeah. They orb on over to Billy, who's still hanging out with uh, the bounty hunter dude, uh, and they've made a deal that they're going to put Leo on ice. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to freeze him in one of these tubes uh, instead of killing him off. Piper's like, well, fuck your thing. <laughs> we got to get rid of this bounty hunter. And they, like, switch them <laughs> so that Leo's going to get frozen and the bounty hunter set free because apparently they had to set him free so he could use his freezy crystals to to do it all right i'm the only one who knows how to use my freezy crystals 
<laughs> and if I do this, I don't have to. T- I get like what amnesty is what he said or something. Diplomatic immunity. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yo, I I get a free pass. You know, you guys can't do anything to me. I don't have to tell you anything about Billy's sister. And she's like, wait, what? <laughs> and like Billy, it's our thing over yours. Sorry, <laughs> we'll find your sister. But this is about Leo, so shut up. <laughs> Everything from her perspective. Like, she's just doing... She doesn't know anything that's happening there. And then all of a sudden, they appear and they're like, Well, sorry, we're freezing Leo. (laughs) Bye! (laughs) What? (laughs) I like... No, they have the angel They know how to freeze him at some point. Yeah. They know how to freeze people. They've frozen him into chocolates before. (laughs) They could have frozen him and kept him in their closet, you know? (laughs) They didn't have to keep him over here. I mean, I guess maybe that freeze isn't supposed to last like this... (laughs) <laughs> whatever carbonate freezing that this bounty hunter does but, um. it's like one of those little um those cups that you put uh, liquid into and then you like squeeze it for a while and then it crunches and turns into yeah. ice <laughs> just puts leo in that and, s- and squeezes it <laughs> i find it really silly though they have the angel of destiny there with them who's like supposedly a superpower but they still need bounty hunter guy to operate his yeah. crystals to freeze he's him. more powerful than the angel of destiny who has authority over the the elders and the avatars yeah this is apparently the highest power we've met in this show <laughs> Fuck, I was just remembering. Do you remember in the series finale, the Angel of Destiny is officiating Phoebe's wedding? Uh... Fuck off. (laughs) (laughs) You must be kidding, aren't you? (sighs) (laughs) The coop really hit the fan. So yeah, um, Leo shows up and he's like, what's going on? And they're like, fuck your consent, Leo. (laughs) 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 <laughs> and then he shatters and they walk through his chocolates. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was a really weird ending. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're basically kind of pulling the uh, the Buffy Angelus ending. You know, mm. like, the, the gates of hell are opening up. What's going on? Shh, close your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Phrase. Minus the death. So, so they take off, uh, leave uh, Frozen Leo there. The bounty hunter is then uh, approached by a uh, big bad who is unseen. And he's like, well, I did what I was supposed to do, man. Yeah. <laughs> he he levitates him in the air. And then um, and he flies into the chamber that's holding Freddy fuckface, well, whatever. Well, like they explode him. And then his kind of explosion stuff. Like- no, no. He, th- he throws him into the, the chamber with Freddy fuckface. And then they both blow up. Yeah. Nonsensically. Well, like he's exploding. Exploding as he throws him into that chamber, though, and then oh, okay. like that one explodes too. <laughs> yeah, the stupid Phantom of the Fuck What? I was just like, oh, had to extra kill him. Like, I don't. I mean, I yeah. guess he could come back since he is just frozen. Why, wh- but it's just like, why was he on ice? Was there a bounty on him, or was he also like someone needed to be motivated to fight the further destiny, but they had to put him on ice? <laughs> well, it was just one of His the demon wife was trophies. fucking off too much. Yeah. Just the bounty hunter guy had these trophies and they wanted this guy to shut up because I guess he would talk. I don't know. Yeah, but why didn't they just kill him? I don't know. There's no reason to freeze him. I don't know why they killed the bounty hunter guy <laughs> other than just let's tie up that loose end even though like... Why didn't... I thought that was just sloppy really because it's like, okay, now this guy would be a bigger <laughs> issue for the Charmed Ones because they made a deal with him. <laughs> Yeah, but it's that like, would that would mean something, but it didn't. Yeah, and they're just like, oh, let's just uh, <laughs> randomly have him die at the end. Just like, why do you even have the fucking deal in the dumb show if you're just going to kill him after that? Don't bother with I'm, it. <laughs> I'm just imagining what if immediately after they orb out, he's thrown in, into Leo's chamber and they blow up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could have happened very easily. Yeah. Well, the Angel of why Destiny... They, why didn't they kill Leo, anyway? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> the Angel of Destiny <laughs> took his chamber. Oh, did they? Yeah. Oh, okay. She teleported It would have been funnier, though, if, if they leave and then... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, then uh, Phoebe plays with some babies. <laughs> Phoebe plays with the babies in a montage. Ugh. And then Piper cries a while at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Phelan, 
Did you like the episode? <laughs> Pretty stupid. <laughs> like, there's the high points are really just some of the acting surrounding Leo's upcoming death and uh, the death guy himself's pretty good. But yeah, it's pretty stupid in the end. <laughs> and just <laughs> Phoebe, Phoebe's self centered, Piper's a monster. Paige is off in her own world for a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a mixed bag because I think there were portions of this that were actually, uh, especially for season eight, pretty good. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I I think like parts of this were one of Leo's better episodes, but it's all crammed into a lot and then tied into a lot of bullshit. So like the acting's good and like the idea, the general idea is fine that that he's going to die, but uh. But they, they just needed to tweak it a little bit. You could have changed the reasoning just a little bit and had the same story and not had it be like, our characters are so selfish, we have to intervene this way. Mm -hmm. And it's not even really treated that way. That's what they're saying, essentially, but they're not saying it. And that's what's going on with Charmed a lot of the time. They're like, our characters are selfish, but we're not really going to outright say that they're bad guys. Yeah. But they, they are bad guys, really. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, and they're setting up a lot of uh, Billy's plot as well. The, the reason that she sides with her sister is because the other sisters are horrible. Yeah, They're horrible to her. They're horrible about following their destiny. They do all this stuff. And, and all of that culminates in them just having like a little talk with each other about like, are we selfish? No, sometimes we're allowed to be selfish. <laughs> and that's how that ends, you know? And uh, I really wish, you know, since they made this deal with this guy, that that had come back to bite them at some point. Yeah. Because I feel like it's it's so dumb to put that in there and then just have it easily solved by the other villain blowing him up for no discernible reason. <laughs> it was very makes it easy. Yeah. I did appreciate the pun in the title, <laughs> and I liked all of the multiple Leos. I just wish that that had had more of a point in the story. But maybe that would have been better for a comedy episode, you know? <laughs> if there was an episode where every guy was Leo for some reason, leads up to mix-ups, leads to mix-ups and shenanigans and stuff, but I don't know. Just some sort of funny visuals, and then and then he got Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I think this is one of the better ones we've covered from the later seasons, for sure. Um, if you just ignore the sisters. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for Charmed Rewind this week. I hope uh, everyone has a, a wonderful Christmas. Uh, if you enjoyed this, uh, I'd appreciate it if you liked or subscribed or left a review on whatever platform that you're uh, you're enjoying this on. Um, you can see us uh, on YouTube uh, on youtube.com slash movie nights. Uh, youtube.com slash movie nights series. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I know my own uh, my own link there. Uh, you can find us uh, in audio form on anchor.fm under Charmed Rewind or Charmed Hard with a Vengeance. Uh, if you like Phelan stuff, you can find his stuff uh, at youtube.com slash Phelus. On Patreon, you can support the show or uh, vote for Charmed Rewinds like uh, like they did uh, on this one at uh, patreon.com slash movie nights. Uh, Phelan stuff is patreon.com slash Phelus. Thanks to Peter Hunter for editing for us. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at Pretor Hunter. What hashtags, Phelan? <laughs> <laughs> Phantom of the Fuckwad. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Hashtag charmed boot. I like that. <laughs> Go Phantom of the Freddy if Fuckwad won't work. <laughs> I think people can do that. We just can't, I just can't put it on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hashtag happy Halley days. <laughs> We'll see you guys around. Bye, Charmanders! Bye.